Iran-Contra was a secret program by the Reagan administration to circumvent Congress and illegally sell weapons to Iran, a terrorist nation, quote-unquote, in order to pay for a guerrilla war against the Sandinista Nicaraguan government. When the operation was uncovered, it, was also, un it also uncovered an off-the-books operation that, in the words of one man, was a secret government with its own permanent funding mechanism and its own army, navy, and air force. The exposure of Iran-Contra operation revealed the tip of the iceberg. Admiral Richard Secord ran a many-faceted program that concentrated on banking fraud, drug smuggling, and illegal arms dealing by officers and former officers of the U.S. military. Oliver L. North a Marine Lieutenant Colonel assigned to the National Security Council staff beginning in 1981 until he was fired on November 25, 1986, was the White House of official most directly involved in secretly aiding the Contras, selling arms to Iran, and diverting Iranian arms sales proceeds to the Contras. North, who was Deputy Director of Political Military Affairs, reported many of his activities to his superiors, National Security Advisor Robert C. McFarlane, and later John M. Poindexter. He later claimed to have taken much of his direction from Central Intelligence Agency Director William Casey. More significantly, North testified repeatedly that he believed President Reagan was aware and approving of his activities. North was unable to offer direct proof of presidential knowledge and authorization. Both McFarlane and Poindexter were North's channel to the president, have either claimed ignorance of certain of North's activities or said they deliberately shielded the president from such details. In other words, plausible deniability. President Reagan, in written inter interrogatory answers to independent counsel, also denied knowledge of North's illegal conduct. Although the Office of Independent Counsel could not prove that President Reagan directly approved North's criminal actions, there is no doubt that he and his national security advisors allowed North to operate with an unprecedented latitude in the furtherance of administration policies. North was indicted in Mar on March 1988 on 16 Iran-Contra charges, along with Poindexter, retired U.S. Army Air Force Major General Richard V. Secord, and Albert Hakim in a 23-count indictment. After the cases were served and the central conspiracy charges were dropped due to classified information problems, North stood trial beginning in February 1989 on 12 counts. On May 4, 1989, he was found guilty of three counts, including aiding and abetting obstruction of Congress, shredding and altering official documents, and accepting an illegal gratuity from Admiral Secord. North's convictions were vacated on July 20, 1990, after the appeals court found that witnesses in his trial might have been permissibly affected by his immunized congressional testimony, many figures that came under cr criminal investigation and prosecution in Iran-Contra like John Poindexter, Elliot Abrams, Richard Armitage, Dick Cheney, Otto Reich, Colin Powell, and John Negroponte returned to serve in the current Bush administration without serious challenge from the Congress of the United States. The Contras and the Crips A San Francisco Bay Area drug ring sold tons of cocaine to the Crips and Blood street gangs of Los Angeles and funneled millions in drug profits to an arm of the Contra guerrillas of Nicaragua run by the Central Intelligence Agency the San Jose Mercury News has found. This drug network opened the first pipeline between Colombia's cocaine cartels and the black neighborhoods of Los Angeles, a city now known as the crack capital of the world. 
The cocaine that flooded in helped spark a crack explosion in urban America and provided the cash and connections needed for L.A.'s gangs to buy weapons. It is one of the most bizarre alliances in modern history, the union of a U.S.-backed army attempting to overthrow a revolutionary socialist government and the gangsters of Compton and South Central L.A. The Army's financiers, who met with CIA agents before and during the time they were selling the drugs in L.A., delivered cut-rate cocaine to the gangs through a young South Central crack dealer named Ricky Donnell Ross. The investigative reporter, Gary Webb, who broke this story that no other major newspaper would run, was found murdered in what can only be described as a staged suicide.